welcome you officially to one of the uh, Green Months in Tallinn University events. And I'm pretty happy that we have today with us Anneli Ochrfil Och from uh, Let's Do the World, and that will talk uh, about digital waste today. Yeah. So thank you very much for being here. Yeah, thank you, Katarina, for, uh, for the invitation. And uh, don't worry about my family name. It's uh, sometimes it's really hard to Estonians as well. <laughs> so, but uh, let's talk about the digital waste. Um, we have had a lot of discussion about the climate warming and also about the physical waste. But the digital waste is something which uh, we, we haven't talked uh, much and maybe even um, not much, but uh, not at all. But the digital waste is also gaining the, um, uh, the importance. Um, digital waste is also uh, producing CO2 and also having the big impact on the climate warming. And uh, this is the fact which uh, people actually don't know. We think that uh, if we are in our computer or in our smartphone, that uh, this world is um, is somehow uh, living separately from uh, from the physical world, but uh, this is not tr true. Everything what we do in the, in the digital uh, world, it's all um, uh, needs energy, creates a CO2, and uh, and also um, have an impact uh, on the environment. So, but uh, before uh, we are uh, jumping into digital pollution, um, I also would like to introduce really briefly who I am and, uh, and what is the organization behind. So I'm uh, from uh, Let's Do It um, World, uh, which is the largest uh, environmental organization in the world. And we have member organization in 164 countries. We are known by the World Cleanup Day. Uh, World Cleanup Day um, is always on the third, uh, third weekend of September, uh, third Saturday. And um, we have organized World Cleanup Days um, four times. And um, these four times have engaged uh, more than 60 million people in uh, 191 countries. So this is the, the biggest uh, cleanup uh, action uh, in the world, which is happening on the, on the one day. And here you can also see the, the World Cleanup Day numbers. So we have um, uh, numbers, uh, the, the number of countries are, are, are increasing. So last year we had 191 countries already. Uh, during the COVID time, of course, the, the number of participants has been lower because of, uh, of um, restrictions in, in different countries. But uh, back to the digital pollution. So our first... Um, Let's make clear what is the digital trash. So the digit, digital trash is any data which is uh, created uh, online digitally and uh, which is not used anymore. And we have to uh, recognize that everything what we create or move in digital world, everything uh, creates also CO2, which means it uh, contributes to the climate uh, change. And how it uh, contributes it uh, contributes in, in a way that the data and, and also uh, the backups of the data are stored in our computer and uh, in data centers around the globe. All these uh, data centers, they are consuming uh, energy, uh, energy and uh, which means that they are also producing um, uh, CO2. Uh, now, maybe um, some of you can say that, um, but all the big um, uh, data servers, uh, they have claimed that we are carbon neutral, but it's also not, uh, not exactly true. So if we are talking about the big um, uh, data server uh, parks, then they usually um, have achieved the carbon neutrality uh, yeah, with the help of offsetting it's it's mean that the the big um, data server companies they are also doing uh, different activities to um, uh, to neutralize uh, the um, co2 footprint for example we are planting trees or doing some other activities but it uh, doesn't 
uh, erase the fact that the, the data centers are still uh, using a big amount of energy and hence they are also um, uh, producing uh, CO2, which is um, uh, have impact on the on the climate warming. So the carbon footprint of the internet and its supporting system is four percent of uh, global emission. And uh, to make it more understandable, it's equal to airline industry, which we know that it's quite which have a quite big um, carbon footprint. But internet and its supporting system has uh, exactly the same, um, same carbon footprint at the moment. Uh, but the problem is that if the airline industry, maybe because of COVID time, is declining, then the internet and uh, its supporting system, all this IT sector is, um, is uh, going up, it's really increasing uh, quite rapidly. And uh, that's why there are, there are estimations that the carbon footprint of the internet will be already 20% of global greenhouse emission by 2030. And uh, that's why we, we, we also have to start to think about how we can, uh, how we can use uh, the internet, how we can use uh, the, the digital world in a way that we are not uh, destroying the environment and, if, and we are not uh, speeding up the, the climate warming. Um, to make the, um, the digital pollution may, may be more understandable, so how big the impact is, I give you also some, uh, some more facts. Uh, for example, um, the digital waste, waste takes more energy, um, or it takes more energy to mine uh, for Bitcoins when full New Zealand uh, consumes in a year. So Bitcoin uh, actually is uh, quite a resourceful uh, activity and it produces a lot of CO2. It means that it also um, have a really big carbon footprint in terms of, um, in terms of uh, CO2. And um, uh, if we think that, um, that maybe we can uh, uh, produce data or, or use the internet in a way that uh, we are um, using the solar panels, which is uh, clean energy, then it's actually there are not so many um, uh, solar panels in the world to, uh, to create energy, which is uh, needed for the internet. So we actually need three times more energy at the moment when the, all the solar panels in the world can provide. So at the moment, the internet uh, produces more than 900 million tons of uh, CO2 each year. And if we, um, uh, if we put here also the fact that 90% of all data which is in internet is actually waste, it means uh, that this is, the, this is the data which we are never going to use. And it just staying there uh, in, uh, in some uh, clouds and we are not going to use it, which means that this is the this is the digital waste, and it also means that we are producing uh, millions, hundreds of millions of tons of CO two each year, and no one benefits uh, from that. So we can uh, say that um, a digital waste is even more uh, uh, more evil than uh, the the physical waste, because uh, we can see the physical waste in the nature and we pick it up uh, quite easily. We can see the problem, but the digital waste is uh, more hidden. We don't see the, the really huge um, uh, digital landfills uh, in the digital world as we see in the physical world. So um, we have a, a huge digital landfills uh, of uh, digital waste in the, in the internet, and we are even uh, not recognized them. And maybe you can also say that uh, digital waste is something um, which uh, big organizations are producing. 
but it's actually not true. 75% uh, of total di uh, digital footprint is produced by individuals uh, like uh, me and you. So it means that we are um, uh, doing uh, photos and, and videos and sending files, we are posting um, uh, in social media and so on and so on. So 75% of uh, all the all the data, it, it, it's actually generated by the individuals, not the big uh, companies and corporations. And uh, that also means that the um, that uh, to think about the digital pollution and how we can reduce uh, the, um, the digital waste is actually up to individuals, not so much about uh, corporations. Uh, if we are talking about the digital waste, we of course we are talking also about e-waste, which is more known uh, uh, problem than uh, the digital waste. Um, 54 million tons of e-waste we are producing uh, every year, and for example, uh, uh, 1,000 laptops will be discarded every second uh, in the world, and um, uh, the one energy expert. Uh, said uh, during one webinar that uh, to neutralize a carbon footprint of smartphone takes uh, 232 years. That's of course uh, sounds really, uh, really um, uh, amazing uh, number of years. Uh, but uh, the message actually here is that if we can use our smartphone as long as possible then the, the carbon footprint will be lower and lower year by year. So just uh, let's aim to use our computers, our laptops and our smartphones as long as possible. And it's also helped to reduce uh, the, the carbon footprint of, of the e-waste. But um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, the, the carbon impact of computers, uh, from all the digital equipment um, is accounted 37% um, of carbon uh, impact. Phones um, has 23% uh, and TVs only with 14%. Uh, so you can see that actually the, the biggest impact has computers and, and also not, uh, not TVs, which also sometimes uh, people think that it is it, in, in that way. Uh, but um, uh, back to the digital waste. So what we are uh, doing is that we encourage people to, um, uh, to first to do digital cleanup in our smartphones and in, in a computer. And why to do a digital cleanup? That it's, um, there are a lot of benefits of, of, of that. The first benefit is that you can save a huge amount of CO2. And um, uh, and you can easily um, contribute to, uh, to stop or to lower down the, the, the climate uh, warming. And, um, and if we think that the climate warming is something which only the, the, the governments and, uh, and big corporation have to tackle, then you can see that that um, you as individuals can also have a, um, um, you can also um, uh, tackle the, the climate warming as easy as that, just by deleting the, the digital waste in your, in your smartphone. Uh, to do digital cleanup is also extending the life of, uh, of your gadgets, uh, your computer or smartphones. If uh, there is, um, if your computer and smartphone is not full of, um, of uh, digital data, then uh, the life of the, of the phone is also longer. Uh, what we also got a lot of uh, feedback from the digital cleanups that um, after digital cleanup, people feel more balanced and more happy. Uh, they feel that we uh, have taken the control over their lives and uh, which is even more important. And also a lot of uh, surveys have, uh, have proven that, that um, uh, after digital cleanup, uh, the people are more efficient uh, in the work and they are also satisfied with the work. So if we have um, 
if I have phone, which has only the data which we, uh, we need or computer, which has only data what we need, and this is systemized and this is um, like under control, then we can, uh, of course, do our work also more efficiently. And, um, and we, we feel that our life is, uh, is, uh, is, um, is uh, under control. So, but um, now I would like to give you some, um, uh, some tips and tricks on how to reduce your digital um, uh, footprint with the digital cleanup day. And uh, let's start with the really low hanging um, grapes. So first step, uh, what you can do is to delete all duplicate and blurry photos in your uh, smartphone and keep only the best shots. I believe that, um, that everyone uh, of us um, doing the same, if we want to catch the, the right moment uh, or the best moment in, of some situation, then we just do a lot of um, a uh, lot of duplicates. Uh, we have like 20 photos of the same situation uh, to catch the right moment. But um, very often we are not uh, delating uh, the duplicates. But uh, now it would be great if we, uh, if we have the new habits. If we catch the right moment, let's just uh, delete all the, all the other uh, duplicates. We don't need them. And the same thing with uh, blurry photos. So if we have taken accidentally blurry photos, so let's, uh, let's delete them immediately. So then take only one photo. This is, uh, this is also like one advice. Uh, the photos actually uh, are immortal, uh, which means that if your smartphone has um, storage in, uh, in, uh, in the cloud service, it also means that all the photos will be storage in, in the cloud. And even if you are deleting the photos, the some duplicates uh, backups are still, um, are, are still uh, there. So the, the servers will, uh, will do the backups and basically the, the photos what you had taken, they always stay somewhere in the back, backups and backups of the backups. That's why the best photo is not taken, uh, taken photo. And uh, just also give them uh, like understanding of the, of the digital um, uh, footprint of the, of the photos. For example, 100 photos and a couple of videos, which is basically equal to, uh, to one, um, you know, uh, party um, in the weekend. Then it's, uh, it's equal uh, with the CO2 production of the, of the tribe uh, car drive uh, for 17 kilometers. So it's equal to the same, uh, uh, same CO2 production and the, and the digit, um, uh, carbon footprint. Um, and uh, uh, step, uh, step one also contains uh, to delete um, failed and meaningless uh, videos. Uh, Sometimes we are doing the videos just out of the emotions. So we are doing the video, but it has no meaning uh, the next morning. So let's just uh, delete them. And also we can um, uh, free up uh, space in our phones as well. And do the same also for the audio files, music or recordings. So if we don't like uh, some music anymore, just uh, delete it. Um, one tip as well, so uh, just check what kind of quality video you are doing uh, in your phone. So, um, uh, for example, uh, a lot of smartphones nowadays, they allow you to, uh, to 4K um, uh, videos, maybe even already 4Ks uh, or 8Ks uh, videos, but if you are using this video only in your in your phone and uh, the video is only for you uh, as a, as a memory, then basically you don't need a 4K uh, uh, video anymore. So you can um, easily just reduce the quality of the video, which is default quality of the video, uh, and um, and do the video in that way. And if you need uh, better quality, 
then you just can um, can uh, raise easily the quality of the video in the settings again. Number two is uh, delayed emails. Uh, that's our older when uh, one or uh, two years. Um, if you just think about it, uh, so how often you will check the emails that are older than uh, one or two years? I believe that not so often, maybe never. So um, it's, it's worth to delay them because you basically don't need them anymore. So the first um, advice is to decide how old emails you will delete. Is it two years, three years, four years, if you are more you're cautious? And um, uh, to delete uh, uh, emails more easily. So it's, uh, it's good if you archive needed emails immediately. If some emails are coming in, so you can uh, decide uh, immediately if they are needed for you uh, forever. So maybe there are some uh, contracts or some, um, some confirmation of, um, of, your, of your work, whatever, then uh, you, you can archive it say it's immediately. But all the other emails, um, if you are getting older than one, two years, you just uh, can uh, delete them. Also, it's important that emails are not for the discussion. Uh, very often, people are uh, asking advice through the email. So uh, the email is uh, just sending for the information or just sending for the documents. But all the discussion uh, should be in the social media platform. Is it a Slack or Asana or a Facebook or a WhatsApp, whatever, but not email. Also, don't send emails with the attachment, uh, send link instead. Uh, it means that if you are sending uh, emails with the big attachments, they are producing much more CO2 than uh, just a plain email. So it's a uh, better practice is uh, to upload the document you want to share with others to, to some um, Google Drive or some uh, other place in some cloud service and then send the link with the, uh, with the emails. Then we don't create the so much um, uh, CO2. Um, uh, for example, the one email uh, produce around uh, four grams of uh, CO2, uh, but emails with attachment is more than 10 times more. It's uh, around 50 grams of, of CO2. That is, uh, as you see, it's much more, uh, much better to uh, to send without attachment. So, how to delete the emails? There are actually uh, some tips. So, the first, which I already mentioned, is uh, to filter them by date and to delete all uh, all old emails, for example, which are older than um, uh, one or two years. But you can also filter by size to identify the emails that uh, take up the most space in your, in your inbox and uh, just delete the really big ones. Also can uh, filter with the, by the sender name. So if there are some um, just uh, for information, no, uh, no reply newsletter or, or something like that, then, um, then you just uh, can uh, find them and delete them. They are usually uh, such kind of emails that uh, you don't need later anymore. So the um, step number uh, number three is um, um, uh, unsubscribe from uh, newsletters. So exactly unsubscribe, not uh, just delete. Uh, because um, if you are just delating, then uh, the traffic is already has happened, but it's better not to, to create any traffic uh, from the emails. Um, I give you also some facts. Uh, 320 billion emails are, um, are um, sent every day around the world and 60, uh, 62 trillion um, spam emails uh, also sent every year. And it's equal to 20 million tons of CO2, which is, um, which is crazy if you can think about it. Just the spam emails, uh, and it's also contribute a lot to the climate warming. 
Um, as I said, e one email emits uh, around four grams of CO2, and uh, this is equal to carbon footprint of the light bulb uh, turned on for six uh, minutes. Um, uh, then the British people, we also calculated that, for example, if uh, the British people um, start not to send thank you uh, to the emails what they have received, then they could save uh, the um, uh, amount of uh, CO2 equal to 81,000 individual flights from London to Madrid. So it's also quite a big amount, right? And um, also one, uh, one fact is that 1.6 billion trees uh, we should uh, uh, plant to offset the pollution which, are, which is caused by email spam. So as you see, it's better to avoid the spam emails and to avoid, avoid any traffic by, by emails. Emails seemed, uh, seems to us really like a small things, but if, it's, uh, put, uh, if we put it together, then we can see that the impact of the emails around the world is quite big. Um, also, the impact of the sent emails depends on the weight of the content and the attachment. Uh, they, it's also depend on distance traveled between your supplier and the re recipient and also the number of uh, recipients. It means that if you are sending uh, email um, to uh, uh, 10 people, then the, the footprint or the impact is also multiplied with, with 10. Uh, for example, if you send an email with a 10 megabyte attachment to a list of 20 people, uh, it will be duplicated for e each uh, recipient and uh, it's result uh, 200 uh, megabytes of, um, of storage with a single email. So it's also make sure that you send email to as few people as, uh, as possible. So just put um, uh, just in case people do the, uh, to the email. Um, Based on, um, on the previous talk, it's, it's good to adopt good practices in sending um, uh, emails. Uh, delayed messages that don't require any action or you, on your part and uh, not worth keeping, do it immediately because it's uh, quite time consuming to do it later. So limit the number of attachments and the weight of these attachments, uh, limit the number of recipients, limit the size of your signature, Sometimes people are also doing the signature in, in that way that there is always a small picture in, um, uh, below the name. So it's also not good in terms of environment. Limit the number of emails uh, in general. So just uh, if you have a, a discussion, then uh, just go to the social platform. Uh, use the emails only for the official, uh, official letters. And um, favor always verbal communication. Um, by my opinion, we, we send too many emails and we are too many, uh, we are sending too many messages uh, via internet or, or, or digitally. Sometimes it's much better to, to talk people over the phone or physically. So number four is delayed unnecessary files. Uh, so it's uh, also quite time consuming if you start to do it. And if you haven't uh, named the file well, then you have to just open each file and ask yourself if it's uh, useful to you or not. And if it's not, then just delete it. Uh, here you can also sort by time period. Uh, you can just uh, delete all the old files which you don't need, some old projects. You never um, check them any, uh, later on. Uh, you can also uh, filter by file type, for example, the big um, video files, you can uh, filter out and uh, if you don't need them, you just delete. You can uh, filter by size and uh, any other criteria relevant to you. And also if you are, uh, for example, organizing some uh, projects, uh, then uh, delete all the trusts and the previous versions of the files after finishing the projects. Leave only the final version. And of course, um, 
uh, especially for the companies, it's um, it's uh, sometimes there are rules uh, which kind of documents you have to um, keep. So it's also don't forget that one as well. Uh, and tip here is uh, name your files well in your computer so that uh, you can easily find them and you can also easily understand what is inside the file without open that. And in that way, you can uh, just uh, see the name of the file and uh, delete it um, immediately if it's, for example, the uh, older version of the, of the document and you don't need it. And uh, here is also a tip that the working cloud, uh, especially if you are working together, uh, if you are working together on the one uh, documents, then avoid that, that, that you're working in your computer and sending the document to the, to the other people uh, by email. And when they also up, um, uh, downloading the, the file in their computers, they are also working and then, then back and forth. So uh, just work in, in one document in, in the cloud. So number five, uh, delete the applications that you don't use anymore in your smartphones. Um, so the application uh, which we are not using still create traffic in the background. We are um, updating them uh, constantly and we are also checking maybe the, um, the, the data which is uh, relevant uh, to them and so on. So basically the, uh, the application may are create traffic which means they also uh, create in the end CO2 with this uh, traffic. So the tip is if you don't use the application monthly, for example, then it's better to delete it. You can always uh, download it again if you need it. But if, if you are not um, you use the application daily basis, uh, I believe that you are not uh, needing it. Also, it's, it's good to empty your uh, cache temporary files uh, to enable your application to function uh, faster. That's, uh, that's also um, sometimes uh, hidden files, but, uh, but you also just uh, find them and empty them. Uh, there are also sometimes um, uh, light versions of the application. The light version uh, for the Facebook, which is actually quite, um, uh, quite heavy. Uh, so you can uh, use the light version and also update your application uh, in a regular basis because the, um, the new application or updated version of the application, we are using uh, usually using less um, CO2, less energy than the older version. Then um, step number six is uh, delete all uh, old accounts uh, which is actually is also related to cybersecurity. So if you have uh, created some email accounts um, or whatever accounts in, in some uh, application in the program, in the, in the platforms, and if you don't uh, use them anymore, then um, it always has the risk that the, the, um, uh, the passwords are, are leaking. So it's uh, better to uh, delete uh, the accounts, not just to discard them. So deactivate old email accounts and, um, and also check if there are, uh, for example, photo galleries or cloud services uh, related to that uh, email account. We have received um, a lot of feedback from the digital cleanup days that the people, uh, people found uh, the photo galleries, uh, which they are, they were not aware of, and um, that was, of course, a lot of uh, good memories and so on. And then, uh, yeah, maybe you can also find uh, some treasures or some pictures which you already have uh, forgotten. So, be prepared for the nice surprises as well. And um, yeah, delete or deactivate all the old shopping and social net network accounts which you are not using. This is the number six. Um, and of course, you can um, uh, share your results. Um, uh, if you have made all these uh, digital cleanups, then uh, also not only delete, but also um, uh, see how much uh, data you deleted. And, uh, submit 
the results uh, to digitalcleanupday.org page. So we had a digital cleanup day 19 of March, but it, uh, the campaign lasts until Earth Day, which is the 22nd of, uh, of April. And uh, until that um, date, you can still participate in Digital Cleanup Day, which is, um, which is the worldwide initiative about raising awareness of uh, digital pollution. And so far already people from 124 countries have uh, participated in the Digital Cleanup Day. So I also encourage you to participate. So I just uh, register your result of the Digital Cleanup Day, uh, submit how much uh, gigabytes you have uh, deleted the data and the and you can see also how much uh, co2 co2 you um, uh, you saved uh, thanks to that um, digital cleanup so some uh, more uh, tips uh, to keep your carbon uh, footprint um, uh, low uh, for example, uh, prefer uh, mobile uh, versus laptop. Always is better to use a smaller uh, gadget than the, the bigger gadgets. So um, the laptop is better when the big computer and the mobile is better when uh, laptop. Um, so the total environmental cost of using an um, on laptop uh, for a one hour costs about 107 grams of CO2. But using a smartphone for the same uh, time is about uh, 16 grams of CO2. So it's always uh, better to use um, uh, mobile. It creates less CO2 when uh, uh, to do the same activity on the laptop. Then um, the one uh, advice is also disable tracking uh, of the of the um, application who are tracking your, you know, your movements or or um, um, or your running or or just walking. Uh, all the all the application who are counting your steps, for example. So if you don't need uh, the amount of steps that you are uh, taking um, each day, then just disable it because uh, it's also creates a lot of a lot of traffic. Uh, in the background, um, but if if it's needed for your uh, for your training, it's of course uh, just um, uh, enable it again. But in uh, by default, it's better to, to disable it. Then um, uh, during the COVID time, uh, we used to have a Teams or a Zoom meetings, uh, and that. The Zoom and team meet, uh, usage of uh, Zooms and Teams uh, has incre uh, increased really, really rapidly. Um, uh, but uh, my advice is, uh, if you have the Zoom or team meeting, then um, just start the meeting uh, with the video, if you like, uh, to greet everyone. But after that, it's absolutely okay to switch off the video and continue without video, because um, if you want to like, uh, if you would like to be environmental friendly, because uh, the the meeting with the video has a much more um, uh, impact. It uh, creates much more CO two when the meeting without the um, uh, video, and you can see also here on the screen some uh, some facts how much energy uh, the video streaming is uh, producing for example the video streaming um, if you are uh, doing every day uh, the meeting for uh, two hours then it's equal to uh, 3000 kilometers with an on electric scooter uh, per year so it's also quite a lot So uh, to, to sum up, then the, the uh, uh, single-use data in the digital world is quite similar to single-use plastic in the in the physical world. So we um, we are creating every day uh, I can call single-use data, which is something which um, 
we just create? Is it the, the photo or a post, a social media post or, or video, whatever, or the file? We are just using uh, once and then it's um, then we don't uh, need it anymore. But it still stays uh, somewhere in the in the digital uh, world. So that um, let's uh, just start to think about the single use uh, data in the same way as we uh, used to think about single use plastic. Uh, the single use data is also producing um, uh, CO2 as the um, single use plastic in the physical world. Uh, fortunately, single-use data doesn't kill animals or, or birds or fishes as uh, to the single-use plastic, but uh, but in in our hand, the single-use uh, data is um, uh, is much easier to uh, to generate and uh, produce if the single-use plastic, because we are uh, we are creating the single-use data. Uh, so easily that we, we sometimes even don't recognize that. But we have to think that all the data is, uh, is still uh, sitting somewhere in the servers and the backups of the, um, of, uh, of the servers and, and so on and so on. Uh, the footprint of the e-waste depends also the usage of the device uh, so enjoy digital minimalism, just uh, start to recognize uh, what kind of um, uh, data you are generating, uh, do you use it or, or not, and uh, just aim for a digital minimalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, the final step is uh, just uh, don't forget to empty a bin. So if you're doing, for example, the, the digital cleanup day, in your computer, then that's the final final step is empty a bin. Then uh, then you have uh, uh, emptied your your bin um, uh, entirely. And the same thing uh, with the emails. You also have to delete the emails as well from the bin. So you just don't delete them, but also empty your bin as well. Then you have uh, completed the digital cleanup. So we are not doing that. So, um, so um, the digital cleanup day is the initiative uh, by the Let's Do It World. And we are raising the awareness of the digital pollution in, in the world. The digital cleanup day uh, happening every year. And it's always on the third Saturday of March. So uh, I also uh, encourage you or inviting you to take part on the, on the digital cleanup day. Uh, the, the this year digital cleanup day is uh, still in the process. You can uh, submit your, your results of the digital cleanup day until 22nd of, uh, of April. Then we, um, uh, we announce the, the results of the digital cleanup day for this year. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you have to clean up uh, the, the digital waste only on the digital cleanup day. Uh, much better to, uh, is to start uh, to already to avoid um, uh, digital pollution uh, and, and uh, do it, uh, do it um, or have this practice uh, like a daily basis. So just uh, delete all the digital pollution immediately, not to wait until the digital cleanup day, because I, I know that the, um, to delete digital waste is quite uh, time consuming. Uh, for example, I, um, um, I did the digital cleanup day on the digital cleanup day, and um, I, I, I deleted the photos in my smartphone. I realized that I have a 23,000 photos in my smartphone, which was really crazy. I had no idea that I had so many photos here and I'm not the selfie guy, you can believe me. And um, I deleted in the end uh, 10 gigas of uh, photos and videos, but it really took time. It took me four hours to do it. So it also means that it's uh, much easier to do it uh, immediately. If you make a photos, then just, um, uh, delete all the duplicates immediately. So it's uh, much easier uh, to do it in that way than uh, to do it once in a year. 
So um, let's cool down the, the climate uh, by uh, deleting digital waste and and even more uh, to uh, to um, uh, prevent digital pollution in the first hands. So thank you very much. And and if you have uh, questions about the digital pollution or if you have uh, comments or some uh, some thoughts, then I'm really glad to hear them. Thank you very much, Anneli, for the presentation. And I think um, it's very enlightening to understand that basically what we do in the digital world is not the same as the physical. We have like managed to have a great simulation, like work from there, communicate from there, whatever, but still this counts somewhere in the impact. And um, to me, it came, I think, two or three years ago that I realized that, oh, okay, it has an impact and it has an impact on the servers. I couldn't understand that the impact that comes from the internet is actually based on electricity because the servers need to have this data and uh, maintain this data and this data have the impact. And also, I have like a lot of uh, thoughts, but I would like to open the discussion and maybe share reflections and some tips and tricks. Uh, but as a host, I can start, <laughs> especially with the pictures, um, because I'm doing the minimalism workshops and we address there the digital minimalism as well. And one of the main uh, things that I'm trying to address there is that you never carry all your pho photo albums with you whenever you go, wherever you go every single day, then why you keep it here? And uh, as a child, I remember that we didn't have uh, it was not so easy to make a picture. You had to have the film and you had specific amount of pictures that you can take and you were capturing meaningful moments. But now we can capture every moment. But do we actually want to keep memory of each and every moment in our life? So it started losing, let's say, its own um, uh, purpose as an activity. Yeah, yeah. It's actually also that the quality of your memories. So if uh, if you have so many pictures in in um, you don't find anymore the the really uh, really meaningful uh, moments and um, and if you have a digital cleanup day so it's it's not only about um, about helping the environment and helping them stop the climate warming but it's uh, on our hands it's helping yourself as well making yourself happy and also increasing the quality of your life uh, quality of your memories as well. So it's actually it's a it's a win-win situation of the of the digital pollution, but it's also true that the, the digital pollution comes with the with the um, cheap price of the cloud service as well, and uh, for us uh, very often it's uh, just the, the price of the of the service, but not about uh, the climate, right? So if uh, if uh, the cloud uh, if we have a cloud service one tera and it's it's a full, then we are just ordering on our uh, server or one hour service, and we are just continuing, but we are not thinking about uh, how to you know the re reduce the amount of uh, of our waste. It's not um, it doesn't cost much anymore than the storage of uh, of data. And that's that's the problem. Really similar with the with the single use plastic, right? So if you are just uh, buying the coffee cup, or if you're uh, buying the straw or the plastic bottle, it's so cheap that we don't think about it. And it's really easy to, to buy. But, um, and the same thing with digital waste, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's about the comfort because it's much more comfortable to buy a disposable cup instead of co yeah. carrying your reusable. And at the same thing, it's much easier and faster to buy some more extra space than to clean all the uh, like all the files that you have with one, two, three, four uh, dot PDF, for instance, to get into that process. But yeah, thank you very much. And I would like to ask also the people who are here if you have some tips and tricks uh, re to share regarding digital. Uh, uh, decluttering let's say or uh, cleaning up or some reflections that you have from what Anneli has shared with us uh, I have one uh, hello uh, thank you very much for the uh, for the presentation really it was so so fruitful I, I didn't even think about uh, that I'm creating so so much waste but uh, you know, what are the what are the ways of uh, making awareness, awareness, increasing awareness among people? 
because making such a webinar is uh, good, but still um, the speed of uh, creating waste is high. Uh, and uh, uh, making such um, um, global, even global cleanup days, uh, I think it's not enough. Uh, maybe other activities should be, should be developed in order to, to make people responsible what they are doing in the internet, in the digital world. And for now, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't find anything. Uh, yeah. Just this workshop, and I think not enough. <laughs> yeah, this is this is really new topic. Uh, so the the digital waste we have talked only for a couple of years about that, and um, and if you are also. Um, uh, going to speak about the digital pollution, then always people are uh, amazed that we had no idea of, of that problem. And yeah. that's, uh, that's logical because we haven't uh, spoken about that. That's, mm. uh, that's, uh, that's true. And uh, of course, the digital cleanup is uh, just one tool to, to raise awareness. It's mm -hmm. just one initiative, but we, we have to do much, much more. We are also targeting uh, corporations because if the corporations start to uh, um, uh, to make uh, the guidelines of uh, digital uh, um, digital behavior uh, or digital habits in uh, at at work, then may maybe also it comes to the individual life as well. For example, um, uh, uh, some companies are using uh, such kind of rule that uh, all the emails will be deleted automatically uh, after uh, after two years if mm -hmm. you haven't uh, marked them that I want to keep it, which is mm -hmm. really great because you don't have to uh, delay them by yourself and you, uh, and you just uh, mark those emails you, you need and all the other, they are just uh, deleted. Um, so this is, uh, this is the one thing, but uh, what, we, what we are also targeting uh, corporations that they, they start to think about it that um, to think of what kind of um, uh, like guidelines they have to set up to, in order to avoid um, uh, meaningless uh, digital uh, pollution. Also what we are targeting, we are targeting the, the corporation who are producing uh, different kind of applications and, and uh, programs so that um, they are already thinking now uh, what kind of impact their application has if people are starting to use it. So yeah. at the moment, uh, if, uh, if their starts up are uh, producing or creating or developing the, the application, then uh, uh, never uh, is there a discussion about uh, the CO2 impact or, or the, the digital footprint. But we would like to see that, that this is also the, the one criteria what, uh, what we think about it. So how much CO2 the application start to uh, produce if people are starting to use the application or, or, the, or the program. So this is the step by step. But of course, um, we just uh, raising awareness, raising the know-how, and we hope that, uh, that you will hear and you will also spread the, the knowledge uh, further so in that way it's, it works yeah thank you yeah i think it has been like a part of our life that is quite uh recent about in general like doing everything through the digital world and this time that we take responsibility as well about that is like as you clean your house you have to clean also your computer and you have yeah. to maintain it but i think like as you do when you enter in the house the first time that you have to clean everything and this mm -hmm. takes a lot of time and then you just maintain it i think it's the same also digital that you need once and for all to go through that and then just uh keep maintaining the expiration links are great uh like either applications that are offering that okay that you can download or you can find this file until that or i have i had participated in one uh, training some 
some years ago and I was very interested that the trainers shared with us that when the training finished that you can access all the materials until that specific time it was two or three weeks later and then they were deleting everything which mm -hmm. was good for them to have also the, the space available but also that you don't have um, indefinite access to things you have to decide you have to make a decision mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a small yeah, tip. Yeah, this is also a good, uh, good tip. Uh, yeah, indeed. I um, <laughs> I also wanted to add that um, that uh, the fact that we haven't talked about the digital pollution and how we tackle it on a daily basis is quite uh, like a normal development because if uh, if we started to produce cars, then we also didn't have any any traffic rules. Basically, the same thing. So just you know, cars were just driving. <laughs> Uh, forefront back and uh, there was a lot of accidents and if the accident started to happen then uh, we we created the traffic rules the same thing with the digital pollution which is you know the the digital world has exploded and now we have a so big amount of digital waste uh, or digital data then uh, we have to start to think about also the the impact of this uh, digital um, uh, digital waste so it's, it's like a normal development of, of the things. But now it's time. Now it's really time <laughs> to think about. Um, may I ask one more question, which yeah. is uh, why, why I'm just uh, linked to, for this webinar. I've, um, what is the boundaries between uh, waste uh, and uh, being a green, being an eco? Um, uh, how to, how to explain? I, I I'm working on a research uh, based on the manufacturing uh, industries to become more green, uh, eco friendly, and so on. But uh, there is uh, also a topic related to waste. So uh, we consider that you know before being green, you have to clean up <laughs> to clean up everything and uh, at least not to make. Uh, manufacturing waste mm -hmm. so but uh, but uh, for me it's still unclear what is the boundary between becoming uh, green being green or, or eco and not uh, being uh, not producing waste so is it the same or um, or it's uh, somehow if it's connected or how it's connected in terms of waste and uh, eco, um, uh, I'm not sure about uh, about the source you you <laughs> you are studying. But um, uh, by my opinion, uh, uh, the, um, if we're talking about, for example, the zero waste, you have also, I believe, you have uh, heard about the zero waste co concepts. But the yeah. zero waste, uh, it doesn't mean that you have to really be zero waste. So there is no waste you are producing then you can say that you are zero waste. It's, it's not about that. The zero waste, they mean uh, the process. Uh, process uh, means that you, you start to um, implement the, the zero waste principles in your, in, your, um, in your life, if you're individual or in your, um, uh, in your production. And uh, if you're talking about, for example, circular economy, then uh, the same thing. Uh, we are aiming for a circular economy or uh, circularity, which uh, basically the same system as the, um, uh, as the nature does. Uh, nature also doesn't have any any waste. Everything is, uh, you know, um, comes into life. Then it's uh, finally it's it's rotten and they become uh, become the source of another life. It's everything in circle. And the same thing we also have to aim with people. Uh, only people have, you know, invented uh, such kind of things, which uh, we are <laughs> linger in in the environment for uh, for thousands of uh, of years. And very often we we call it innovation. So we call innovation as a plastic bag and uh, straws and so on. But it's not innovation. It's it's a uh, it's a um, it's a dead end uh, road. That's why we have to uh, come back and start to imitate the nature and uh, and. Uh, and take this as an example. So um, there is no such kind of like a, like a line that if we are going over this line, then we are green, then we are um, <laughs> zero waste, and we have a you know, circular economy. It's not, it's a process. We just have to aim 
uh, more and more uh, towards the, the zero waste and then circularity. And even not the circularity, but also the, um, the um, how is English? Mm that we generate uh, generating uh, economy as well so we are not just um, going to, uh, circular but we also um, uh, doing in that way that uh, we can also uh, uh, make the environment healthy again so it's uh, regenerating the, the environment again so uh, help mm -hmm. them to uh, to heal uh, from the impact of the humankind, but this is the the, the final uh, final destination. Okay. But yeah, but as um, as even for the individuals, you usually say that you can just um, be better, uh, be better of your yesterday version of yourself. So the same thing of uh, of of the companies and uh, and um, and uh, being green as well. You just can be better when you you were yesterday this is the process if i answer your question now <laughs> yeah yeah but it's, uh, in order to push uh, companies to be the best version of uh, themselves uh, for now it's only governmental regulations which control this um, such kind of uh, carbon emission uh, and so on. The, the main factor which push them to, to be uh, to, to make less waste is uh, governmental control. What uh, and also clients and consumers. So and this is where we, are, we are talking about the systemic change. This is the social uh, uh, technological transformation what we are aiming. Mm -hmm. And that there are governments uh, government uh, should um, should uh, make a regulations uh, to uh, to boost the circular economy and also to enable uh, the companies uh, to uh, to implement the circular economy models then uh, the companies have to uh, design out the waste of the production and also all the life cycle of the of the products not, uh, uh, not thinking only about um, uh, production and the life cycle, but also think about uh, where the, um, the product goes after usage of these products. So basically mm -hmm. all the life cycle. So we, we have to think about, so if we, um, the, uh, the, um, the customer doesn't uh, need uh, the product anymore, then what happens next? Is it, uh, is it re uh, repairable, reusable? or recyclable in the end and so on. So it's, we have to aim for a circularity. And the consumers, they can also uh, vote with the money. So we, uh, we vote uh, for the products which are, uh, uh, which has lower environmental uh, footprint. And uh, for example, in Estonia, um, uh, there are a lot of surveys who uh, has, um, investigated uh, how environmentally friendly the Estonians are and if the corporation can invent the inventor come uh, come to the market with the environmental friendly products and very often they come out that uh, Estonians are not ready for that it means that even corporations are coming out with the green products but the, the people are not uh, buying them because they are prefer the, um, uh, the dirtiest uh, products because of uh, because of uh, we are maybe more convenient, more cheaper, or whatever the, the reason is. And that's why the, um, we have to, all these three sectors, they have to work together in order to make this transformation to the circular economy. Mm. It means that every sector has to pay, uh, pay, uh, play the role, otherwise it doesn't work. Otherwise still, you know, that um, if companies are coming out with the, um, with the circular model, then, uh, but the con uh, customer doesn't support it, then, um, you know, it's, they are just have to take the, the products out of the market. And the circularity is, um, is based on cooperation. It also means that the, the one company can't, um, can't just independently uh, have the circular economy model because uh, we are depending on our uh, stakeholders on the market as well. Uh, which actually I really like about the circular economy, that it's, uh, it's about the cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
linear economy is about the competition. This is the, the main principle of the, the linear com uh, economy that we are competing and that that's why it's you know demanding and um, and um, wanting goods it's make the price and so on. But the uh, circular economy is about the cooperation. But it also means that uh, if the one company is coming out with the circular model, the other stakeholders also have to be ready for that. They also have to implement and change the uh, uh, change the way or, uh, way of doing business. I think you framed it very well that it needs to work as a system, and uh, where everyone works in a collaborative way and not in a competitive way, because no regardless of how much money we will make either now or in the next let's say five years climate change will affect us all regardless of uh, what is the if it is like a person who is uh, manufacturing disposable uh, products based on linear economy either or if it's something very environmental friendly based on circular economy so we i think it's time that we have to shift that uh, that mentality and that this focus basically there is a question from Kaya. If there is a certification model in place for digital waste, just like as we have quality standards, for example, ISO certification. Yeah, that's uh, that's really great uh, question. Thank you, Kaya. So we have not, and um, and uh, this is also something which uh, which we are working on, and um, uh, together with the uh, with the universities and the institutions. So we have uh, talked to technical uh, technical uh, university of Tallinn and also the sustainable uh, institution of sustainable IT in France uh, to figure out the um, also the uh, certification model uh, for the digital pollution and and if you delaying the digital waste so how much CO two we uh, we save at the moment we are using quite simplified. Uh, model uh, to uh, to calculate um, CO2 production uh, of uh, of gigabytes, uh, deleted gigabytes, but it's really simplified and it's also quite different from country by country because uh, the countries have different uh, uh, different sources for uh, for energy and that's why the um, the footprint is also different. For example, in Estonia, it's enormous because of uh, we are just using quite dirty energy at the moment. Uh, but uh, we like to come out uh, with the more uh, specific um, certification uh, model for the digital pollution as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Anneli, who, uh, who made this survey? Uh... You mentioned that uh, among Estonian customers, they made a survey mm. uh, and they they prefer not green. What organization? Yeah, for example, um, you can uh, search for Orkla. Uh, Orkla is one uh, the food uh, uh, producer in Estonia, and they have um, uh, they have ordered. Uh, I think it's already three years uh, for three years. The the survey about. Um, uh, about how uh, how environmentally friendly people are in Nordics and Baltics. So it's all the Nordic countries and Baltic countries are in, in the survey. And it's, it's really interesting uh, survey. So how people are, are thinking about uh, the plastic, the waste, the climate change, what is important to them. Uh, are we ready to prefer, for example, um, uh, uh, reusable things, or the um, or eat less meat, or 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 uh, buy less uh, clothes, and so on. Uh, there was uh, quite embarrassing facts about the Estonians, okay. unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. I think uh, if there are not other questions, we can wrap it up, but I'll make a last call if there are any questions or comments for Anneli. Yeah. Okay, so thank you very much for that. I think it's quite enlightening to, to hear again about this problem and see what we can actually do. And I guess in the whole spectrum of sustainability is start what is more convenient for you as the first step and what is closer that you 
you can see the, the progress and the fact that it's possible to actually submit measure measure and then submit uh, what you have done it already gives you a little bit of um, encouraging to do more i think all the time that we were talking i was just trying to filter my emails and see i think i have already deleted about 800 so i'm on the, <laughs> the way there okay. yeah so i hope i will clean it very fast and uh, submit my my um contribution let's say as well to, to the environment so thank you very much Annelie for that it was a pleasure to, to have you and let's clean the world <laughs> do matter. <laughs> yeah, do matter. let's clean the world thank you thank you, so thank you very much bye bye bye